Donald Trump, you're asking Americans to trust you with their future. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? That challenge issued by Kaiser Khan, the father of fallen army captain Himayun Khan, has cast a lingering shadow over Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Trump questioned the right of Khan to criticize him and implied his wife's silence was because of her Muslim faith. She was standing there. She had nothing to say. She probably, maybe she wasn't allowed to have anything to say. Earlier in the campaign... I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Trump refused to back down from his criticism of another war hero, Arizona Senator John McCain, who today said becoming the Republican Party's nominee did not give Trump an unfettered license to defame those who are the best among us. President Obama also weighed in. As Commander-in-Chief, I'm pretty tired of some folks trash-talking. America's military and troops. At Arlington National Cemetery, we met the Dowells, who were there to visit a family member's grave, but were drawn to Captain Khan's resting place. Jake Dowell said Trump has wronged the Khans. I mean, Donald Trump is just trying to take away the power of the situation and, and the amazing sacrifice he made and the amazing bravery both of his parents uh, displayed just going up there. Tony Dowell said Trump set this controversy in motion long ago. The politicization of this uh, began with Mr. Trump attacking uh, people of the Muslim faith. He's been doing it for a year. It deeply saddened me. Carlene Cross, a Gold Star mother whose son Jason Bogart died in this 2008 battle in Afghanistan, described how she and other Gold Star families feel blindsided by Trump. But at least honor, honor the, the family, honor that ultimate sacrifice. And I think Gold Star families are confused you know, that this could actually even be spoken from someone aspiring to be president of the United States. The Veterans of Foreign Wars, an organization Trump spoke to only last week, said it will not tolerate anyone berating a Gold Star family member for exercising his or her right of speech. And Elaine, our latest poll shows 63 percent of those surveyed do not believe Trump has the right temperament to be president. Well, Major, as you know, former Senator Scott Brown, a prominent Trump backer, also went after Trump Monday, telling the New York Daily News, quote, if it were me, the easiest thing to do is say I apologize. Their son's service is beyond reproach. Major, what have you seen in these rebukes of Trump? That they're widespread, that they're deep, that they're bipartisan, and that there is a sense that a line has been crossed that no one has ever seen before in American presidential rhetoric or any other kind of political rhetoric in our country's history. That never before has there been even the slightest suggestion that there's anything beyond the pale or out of bounds or cross that a Gold Star family member could say in a political context, that they were inviolate, untouchable. And Trump has crossed over that line. And there's a deep sense, not only of misgiving, but a sense of sadness I pick up among some Republicans, even those who are still inclined to support Trump. They see this as a very big mistake, something that has derailed the conversation about the direction of the country, derailed a conversation about Hillary Clinton and her relative qualifications for the highest office in the land, and a sense that Trump is not only creating a problem for himself, but the problem is continuing by his indifference to it and his refusal to acknowledge what a big problem it is and the larger problem it could become. And those within the Trump circle of supporters, I'm not talking about the inner circle of the campaign, but people who want to see this campaign do well are urging him to reverse course, apologize and try to figure out if there is a way to get beyond this. And they're not so sure there is, but they know it's impossible to get beyond this unless you recognize what's happened, the damage done, and apologize for it. So, Major, against that backdrop, Reuters is reporting that Trump's campaign has reached out to a number of Republican lawmakers to release statements backing Trump. What is your take, Major, on the campaign's handling of this fallout? That it's the same as every other thing that Trump sets in motion himself, that these people are, generally speaking, powerless to correct a course that Trump has decided to take. As misguided as they might think it is, even those closest to him, they're powerless to change it. Until Trump does something by himself, 
The campaign is adrift, and this is a classic illustration of that. Those around Trump can do nothing until he does it himself. And his inability to accept counsel, to take counsel on board, and to react to it and chart a new course is something that those closest to him have to live with. And the public gets to see it in moments like this. Finally, Major, I want to get your thoughts on something Trump said Monday afternoon at a rally in Columbus, Ohio. Let's take a listen. Poor Bernie. He looks so upset. He, you know what? He made a mistake. He shouldn't have made a deal. Sometimes he, he lost. He lost. First of all, it was rigged. And I'm afraid the election is going to be rigged. I have to be honest. So, Major, that last part there, quote, I'm afraid the election is going to be rigged. What's the strategy there? I have no idea whatsoever, Elaine, except there are times when Trump says things he genuinely means, and then there are times he says things that just literally come into his mind, and he doesn't mean or doesn't even accept the fact that if you read it back to him that he even said it. I don't know where this falls in that category. What I do know is the Trump campaign or Trump himself made a big deal in Columbus, Ohio, that the fire marshal had, in a disgraceful manner, limited the size of his crowd to 1,000 where we subsequently learned through our own CBS News reporting that for four days this event had been planned and the Trump campaign accepted up front a crowd limitation of 1,000 for lots of different reasons, dealing with the size and some construction going on at the venue. So there are things that Trump says in public that he says with great vigor and passion that have no connection to facts whatsoever, even facts agreed to by his own campaign. So where this falls in that continuum, I have absolutely no idea. Hmm. Major Garrett, continuing to watch it for us. Major, thank you so much.